First tonight, a new package of bills would abolish sentencing juveniles to life in prison without parole in Michigan. News 8's Byron Tullison heard from West Michigan prosecutors strongly against the legislation and those who say it's a necessary step to give offenders a second chance. In 2012, the Supreme Court ruled that for juveniles, mandatory sentences of life in prison without the possibility of parole are unconstitutional. And the way this legislation is written right now, it would entirely abolish sentences of life in prison without the possibility of parole, no matter what the crime is for juveniles. Some West Michigan prosecutors, both Democrats, say banning sentencing juveniles to life in prison without parole goes too far. This is such a slap in the face of victims. We are vehemently opposed to this legislation. It's just not very, well, it's not very victim friendly at all. It's mind boggling that it's even being considered. Some crimes carry that sentence for juveniles, like first degree murder. But if the bills pass, those life offenses committed by juveniles before the age of 19 would change to a minimum of 10 years and a maximum of 60 years. That would allow for the possibility of parole after 10 years behind bars, regardless of the severity of the crime. Think of Ethan Crumbly in the Oxford school shooting. He killed four kids and injured others, traumatized an entire community. He will be eligible for release from prison after only 10 years. Prosecutors say that's unfair for victims' families seeking justice. Those families that have to be re-traumatized and go through the process of living through this again after only 10 years, after he served two and a half years for each of the persons that he's killed, they have to come back and argue for the Department of Corrections to keep them in. It is completely off base and, and out of bounds as far as I'm concerned, having dealt with so many victims of these crimes. Tina Olson, the managing attorney at the State Appellate Defender Office, says Michigan is an outlier right now and should follow states like Illinois that have made similar changes. It provides hope for the future for our clients who committed their sometimes very heinous crimes when they were children when they were adolescents, when they were not mature, and who, after serving years of incarceration, are very, very different people. Olson says in her years of working with defendants, she's found most suffered physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, poverty, or violence. But it means that in crafting a sentence for them and deciding whether or not they should die in prison, um, we need to take those things into account. She agrees it would be difficult for victims' families, but believes juveniles should get a second chance. I always want to, I guess, push back against the thought that children are incapable of change and that we need to treat them as some sort of um, monsters, which they're not. They're, they're remorseful, rehabilitated people. While one prosecutor counters, it's not only wrong for victims' families, but could also lead to more crime. And it doesn't serve victims or victims' families. It doesn't serve public safety. Convicts would get the possibility of parole after 10 years, and if this legislation goes through, parole boards would be instructed to consider numerous factors when deciding to release them, like their home life, their age at the time, circumstances surrounding the crime, and immaturity. Back to you.